Hi, I'm Mike with Mortgage Inspection Services. Today I want to talk to you about lost neutrals, what it is, what causes it, and what the consequences of it are. I'm going to show you exactly what happens with a lost neutral using this demonstration board that I built with these six light bulbs. And I think this will make it very clear to you what the consequences of a lost neutral are and why a lost neutral does what it does. As a preview, let's take a quick look at an animation which shows a properly operating electrical system. You can see the current is flowing on leg one, then back to the neutral, and it's also flowing on leg two and back to the neutral. Uh, leg one and leg two are essentially separate from each other. Now, let's break that neutral and watch what happens. Now you can see how the current begins flowing from leg one to leg two, and then back to the transformer. So it reversed directions on the second half of the circuit, or on leg two. So basically, a lost neutral occurs uh, when a neutral is broken or lost somewhere before your home's breaker panel. And we'll come back to this animation in a couple of minutes. Uh, a lost neutral can happen over time from corrosion, maybe from a tree branch um, rubbing on your power line where it runs across your yard or from various other causes. But a lost neutral must occur somewhere before your home's breaker panel. Sometimes a neutral is lost uh, somewhere upstream where it's able to affect multiple homes. If a neutral becomes disconnected somewhere in your house, then that is a completely different situation called an open neutral. And an open neutral is a much less serious situation, and I have another video on that. A lost neutral can cause some serious damage in your home. And before I show you a lost neutral on this light board, I want to very briefly show how a typical electrical system works. So let's look at this animation. Uh, the blue dots that you see really aren't electrons. Uh, they're just uh, here to represent the flow of current through the system. On a typical electrical system, you have 240 volts. That's created by having two separate 120 volt phases or legs. The two legs are 180 degrees out of phase. You can see here on this diagram that I have leg one and leg two labeled. So the three lights or loads on the top of the diagram are one leg and the three on the bottom are the other leg. Although this is not completely accurate, uh, for simplification purposes, we're gonna say that the upper half or leg one is at positive 120 volts and leg two, the bottom part, is at negative 120 volts. Uh, for the bigger loads in your house, such as your air conditioner, your water heater, your stove, uh, you have 240 volts for those loads. And that's achieved by having both the negative 120 volt leg and the positive 120 volt leg powering those devices. The difference between negative 120 and positive 120 is 240. So that's where you get the 240 volt circuits. Let's set this current uh, to moving and you'll see that the current flows from the transformer, which isn't shown, onto leg one, which is the red wire through the th uh, three loads and then it goes to the green wire, which is the neutral, and it flows back to the right and then uh, down and back to the transformer. And at the same time, you have the exact same thing happening on the lower half or leg two. Now you might notice that there's no current flowing on the green neutral wire on the right side of the diagram. This is because you have balanced loads on each leg and since they're 180 degrees out of phase, the currents basically cancel each other out and you have no current flowing on the neutral wire when the loads are perfectly balanced. Now let's start uh, turning off some of the loads. You'll see the voltage written over there to the left and it doesn't matter how many loads are turned off, the voltage remains at about 120 volts regardless of how many loads are being supplied by the leg. Now, this is because all the loads on leg one are in parallel with each other and all the loads on leg two are in parallel with each other. You'll also notice that once the loads are turned off, the two legs are no longer balanced. So you also begin to see some current flowing on the neutral wire on the right side of the diagram. Okay, let's go back to the light board now. This light board is essentially the same thing as the animation that you just saw. You have two legs. Leg one is on the left and leg two is on the right. I've powered this light board uh, by running a, a wire uh, to my oven outlet in the kitchen uh, so that I could have 240 volts to the board. Uh, so again, one leg, as you can see down here, is about 120 volts, and leg two on this meter is also at about 120 volts. 
It doesn't matter if I turn off some of these lights. Since the loads are in parallel, the voltage doesn't change. And regardless of how many lights or loads are turned off, the voltage remains the same. Because the neutral wire acts as the anchor point of the electrical system, and because all the loads on each leg are in parallel with each other, the voltage remains constant at about 120 volts. Now let's talk about a lost neutral. I'm going to show it on this light board, but first let's go back to the animation so you can see what's happening. Look at the neutral wire. You can see that I've simulated it being broken. It has the red X. The anchor for the electrical system is now gone. Now what you have are the two legs of the electrical system in series with one another. The total voltage on the system is 240 volts, the difference between positive 120 and negative 120. You can see that the current starts flowing on leg one, it flows along the red wire to each of the loads and through the loads, and then it goes to the green neutral wire, and instead of turning right uh, where it meets uh, the neutral wire from leg two, it now continues down the green wire, flows to the three loads on the other leg, and it goes through those loads, then onto the black wire, which is the hot wire for leg two. And from there, it flows back out to the transformer. So what you have are leg one and leg two in series with one another in a 240 volt circuit. Now look over to the left. It shows that both legs are still at 120 volts. So what's so bad about a lost neutral, you might ask? You're still at 120 volts on each leg, but the only reason you're at 120 volts on each leg is because the two legs are perfectly balanced. You have the same load on each leg, but how often do you think you'll have a perfectly balanced system in your house? Okay, so let's go back to the light board. I'm going to create or simulate a lost neutral by disconnecting this wire here. You can see that the two neutrals uh, for the two legs are still twisted together. You just don't have a neutral that would go back to the transformer any longer. Now what I'm doing here is a little bit dangerous because I do have live exposed wires. So I would recommend you not try this and I will try to be careful. So now on this light board, we have a lost neutral. However, at the current time, we have balanced loads on each leg. We've got three light bulbs burning on each side and the voltages are still constant about 122 and 123 volts on the two legs. So right now it seems to be working just like normal. But in fact, things are very far from normal. And what we have, as I showed in the animation, is the electricity is coming up from the hot leg here, running up through these lights, back down through the neutral, and at the connection of the two neutrals, instead of flowing back out to the transformer, it flows over to the second leg on the neutral, up to these three loads, then back down on the hot wire, and then back out, theoretically, to the transformer. So again, like we showed in the animation, what you have are these 220 volt legs in series, creating a 240 volt circuit. If this lost neutral occurs on your house, then every light and appliance in your home is now running on a 240 volt circuit. Again, in this demonstration right now, it's acting like normal because we have balanced loads. But let's watch what happens when the loads become unbalanced. Let's turn off this light and see what happens. Because you only have two lights here, your resistance is now higher. And since voltage is proportional to resistance, your voltage on this side is also going to be higher. Uh, you can see here that you have 173 volts on this side and about 71 volts on the other side. That's still a total of 244 volts, but the majority of the voltage is on this side now. Let's look really quick at the animation. You can see here basically the same thing that we already saw with the actual lights. When you have loads in series, the voltage is determined by the respective resistances of the loads. Okay, so let's go back to the light board. If we turn off the light here, we now have balanced loads again, so the lights are about equal brightness, and you can see that the voltages are 124 volts and 120 volts. Now again, on a properly operating system, it doesn't matter how many loads are on. You're gonna have 120 volts on each leg. Let's turn this light back on, so we're back to an unbalanced system. You have about 71 volts, 
and 173 volts. Now I'm gonna turn one more light off. It makes me a little bit nervous, uh, but let's see what happens. Look at this. On the left side, you have 31 volts. It's not even enough voltage to turn these lights on. And on this side, you have 212 volts. Look how bright that light is. I was a little worried that that light was gonna burn out or worse yet explode, so, so I turned that light back on. Just imagine if instead of that light, you had your TV plugged into that circuit or a refrigerator or some other electronics. It would fry the electronics within probably just a few seconds. This is the problem with the lost neutral. You have high voltage on one side and low voltage on the other side. Every time you turn something on, the voltage is gonna change. There's a serious danger of ruining some or most of the electronics in your home, and this could be a very expensive problem. So let's turn this light back on, and let's go to the other side and see what happens when we turn the light off. You can see that we have the same effect when we turn off this light. On one side we have 175 or 76 volts, and on the other side we have 68 or 69 volts. So if in your house you start noticing that sometimes lights are dimmer or sometimes other lights are brighter or maybe a piece of electronic equipment isn't working, you very well may have a lost neutral. Now this is very different from a light dimming momentarily when your air conditioner or your refrigerator kicks on. But if the lights dim and stay dimmed or if they're brighter than normal and the brightness changes as other things are turned off and on, then it's probably time to investigate a little further and maybe even call your electric company or an electrician because this is a very serious problem. And as you can see, it can cause quite a bit of damage to your home. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding what lost neutrals do and why they do what they do. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I'll do my best to respond just as soon as possible. I sure appreciate you watching. Have a good day.